So today I'm going to be installing a block heater in my Kubota L3800 tractor. Like I said in the theme of my other videos, uh, do a how-to that doesn't seem to exist anywhere else. First thing we've got to do is open the hood. There's the hood latch here, pull that down, pop the hood up, come around to the right side of the tractor, and when I reference right or left that's always going to be from the perspective of sitting in the driver's seat i have found what i believe is the petcock for the radiator I have these uh, repurposed uh, cat litter jugs that i'm going to use to put the antifreeze in turn this guy loose right here i believe this is going to be our petcock yeah some green fluid coming out of there I think it's pretty common knowledge, but antifreeze is extremely toxic to animals and people for that matter. This uh, drain plug is captive, it appears, so it's not coming out of there. It's just going to loosen and let it drain. Um, I'm going to take the radiator cap off to allow some airflow. I'm going to get a funnel and open the, um, open the cap on the radiator. All right, so I came ill prepared and did not bring a funnel. There we go. For those of you who may not know, a block heater um, is basically just an electrical element, exactly like what you have in your electric water heater, except smaller. And it keeps the antifreeze or whatever you happen to have in your block, hopefully, antifreeze and not straight water. But uh, it keeps the antifreeze in the block of the engine warm. By virtue of heating the antifreeze, heats the block and keeps the oil warm and fairly thin. Uh, if you can keep it warm and thin and, and less uh, viscous, it will circulate through the engine much faster and reduce the amount of startup wear on your engine. So the idea here is we have to drain that antifreeze out of the block so that when we knock our freeze plug out that um, we won't have antifreeze going everywhere it'll be it'll be already out and below the level of the freeze plugs in the block and we won't make a big mess so while we're waiting on that we've got probably a good oh close to a gallon of antifreeze out already so i'm going to go ahead and go around to the other side and we're going to take a look at what we need to do over there and start working on the actual process of getting to the freeze plug and getting it out. One of the freeze plugs, there's another one right there, and there's another one behind the starter here. Um, the one this needs to go in is this guy right here, which is, as you can see, is yeah, you know, it's tucked in behind the starter in a less than convenient way. It's gonna be tricky. I'm gonna try to get it out uh, without taking the starter off. But frankly, it looks like it probably would be a lot easier to get out and to mess with if I took the starter off. I'm going to tap on the edge of this freeze plug and hopefully that'll make this edge pop out and I can get a hold of it with a pair of vice grips and yank it out of there. Wow, okay. Well, okay. That wasn't the plan, but Clearly, I did not get all of the antifreeze out of the block. There we go. All right. All right, then. So there's the freeze plug. Out, all good. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is clean this area of the block up. Just clean the antifreeze off. Hopefully, if you're smarter than me, you don't end up with antifreeze all over the place. I got it. Now, we got this sleeve out of the Kubota kit. It's threaded on this side, and it's not threaded on this side, and it's got a little lip on it there. It's kind of hard to see because I already have Loctite spread on it. I'm using the blue Loctite, not the Wrangler Star sanctioned uh, red Loctite. The tapered end is what goes into the block, just drives into that hole. And the, the big deal here is 
you got to make sure to drive this thing in square and straight all right i'm gonna attempt to get this thing started if i get it even started in there slightly i'm going to use this socket on the back of it like this and to, to drive it in uh, this is a 27 millimeter socket socket that'll fit in behind that starter yes okay and this is the part where having the starter off would be a huge benefit there's a lot that can go wrong here if we're not careful so I'm gonna go ahead and take that starter off one thing you're gonna to want to do before you start is unhook your uh, battery cable because you are going to be taking the starter off and it's got a direct lead from the hot side of the battery to the hot side of the starter and you will inevitably ground it out against the engine block Got a 10 millimeter bolt right here set it aside where it's not touching anything there's one bolt down here one bolt in there right there that little washer okay the bottom starter bolt yeah it says in the instructions to lightly tap this with a plastic mallet to get it in the block I got news for you you ain't getting that in there with a plastic mallet Okay, and you can stick your finger inside the hole here, the freeze plug hole, and you can feel the cylinder wall. Two things. You don't want this far enough back in there where it's butted up against the cylinder wall and water can't get around it. And you don't want to hit that cylinder wall and crack it. If you do, you ruin your engine. Some more oomph into it because it's starting to get stiff. That's what she said. Ha, ha, ha off-color humor and obviously you don't want to drive right on this bushing because you'll mangle up the threads but you can see now that we're in here close and you got a good view you can see a freeze plug here and another freeze plug right here and the instructions say to put this in the center for it Still, between three sixteenths and an eighth, it feels like. What they're talking about using a plastic mallet to drive this in. I just I don't see that happening. I mean, this is a twenty-two ounce S-wing framing hammer, you know, and you can see I'm hitting with a fair degree of force. You ain't getting this in there with a plastic mallet. It ain't happening. The instructions do not say that it needs to be completely seated down against the block. It just says it needs to be in there straight and even where it'll seal. I believe that is and it also says of course not to let the leading edge of the bushing hit the cylinder wall which it's not I think I'm gonna stop there because I think it's in plenty tight enough it sure as hell in tighter than that uh, freeze plug was I've got my bushing installed in the block this is the heating element again it's exactly like a heating element in your water heater just smaller and a little less wattage this one is 400 watts. So we have to apply some Teflon tape. You always want to put your Teflon tape on so that when you terminate the end, you want the end facing away from the way the threads turn. So with your Teflon tape, you want to start at the bottom of your thread and go around and you want to lap your first lap. And pro you know, two layers usually is enough to create a good seal. Go all the way up to the top of your threads. And when you pull it off, the tail is facing this way, and this is going to screw in like this. Insert this in here. 12 inch adjustable wrench. You don't need to put much uh, ump on this thing because all it needs to do is seal. It doesn't need to be super duper tight. But it is a taper fit, so you do need to have it tight enough to, uh, to seal. 
I'm gonna call that good. Gotta get the starter back on. Let's do that now. There we go. All right, so the trick to the starter, and I should have known this, is it, this bolt in the top is a stud coming out of the transmission case there. So you want to get the you want to get that one on first. Uh, uh, get the bolt through the hole in the starter flange, and, and then it'll flop right on there, and it's no problem. So I'm going to try to go ahead and get this washer and this nut back on the top bolt first. Good. Plug this. Like that. Now then, that's where I like that. Not in use, I'll store it like that. Time to put this battery cable back on. There you go. So now we're over here, we got the petcock for the radiator. Just gonna screw that back in. I think that'll do. I'm gonna go ahead and put some green juice back in the radiator. We don't have any leaks at our petcock. It's all dry. You'll definitely wanna put more fluid in your reservoir and probably overfill it um, because you know, we drained a lot of water out of the block that's going to have to come out of there to refill. Last things last, check for leaks in the block and etc. No leaks, everything's dry, looks good. I'm happy with that. You see where this coolant level is here. We're going to watch as the tractor comes up to operating temperature, this will start to go down as it sucks water into the block. It's already circulating it with the water pump right now out of the radiator in through the engine block. And then as it gets hot, it'll pull some out of here. And there you have it. One block heater installed. Watching our engine temperature. We need to keep an eye on this and on our antifreeze level in the reservoir, at least for the first couple of hours you operate it. Keep that fluid filled, filled up when it sucks it out of there. That's been putting the block heater in my Kubota L3800 tractor. Hope you found it helpful. Now, next problem, I gotta clean up this mess.